No question about it, Mike. Who says we're not versatile? I mean, wrestling and gymnastics, it's quite the event put on every year here at Brown and should be a great day of action on both the mat and the vault and the beams and the uneven bars and what am I missing? Floor exercise, of course. So it's a busy day here at uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Bears will be having their senior day match against Sacred Heart. Final dual wrestling match of the season as the Bears host Sacred Heart. And uh, they're going to announce the starters on the wrestling side. We do know that there's a, there is a rotation that will uh, roll through with the gymnastics. We will do our best to keep you all uh, informed of how this all works. Now, the wrestling match will start at the 125-pound weight class and work its way up. We know that Southern Connecticut is starting on the vault, and uh, the rest of the way we'll get a sense of whether the Bears are starting on the floor. I thought that based on the warm-up, the Bears were starting on the floor. Long Island University was starting on the beam, and Rhode Island College will open up on the bars, David. Looks like it. Perhaps Long Island and Rhode Island College switching spots as Rhode Island College is down by the balance beam and the Sharks are here on the uneven bars. Obviously a lot of moving parts, and we will keep you posted as this action gets underway in all five spots. Now the way this all will shake out, again, you'll have a split view on your screen of a whole bunch of events. Uh, you know, we'll obviously be looking at, uh, at different competitors at different times. Uh, certain events on the gymnastics side take a little bit longer, David. Yep. And so we'll do our best to keep you informed, not only with who is where, but also what some of the scores are. Yeah, as the scores roll in for sure. Brown and Sacred Heart, the wrestling match front and center should be really fun to watch. Sacred Heart just one and seven coming into the weekend. They had a match at Long Island and it's their third straight dual match on the road. I'm interested to see how they respond. They only have one dual match victory coming into this weekend. Brown on the other side, three and eight, two and six in EIWA conference action. And as you mentioned, this is the last match that they have before the EIWA championships. We hosted at Cornell in a couple weeks time to give the Bears an opportunity as well as some of their opponents, obviously, some time to get some uh, get their health back. Uh, the Bears are down a couple of guys, but uh, have their have had their depth tested the other night against Harvard. The Bears were within striking distance, and the Crimson were able to pull away with a pin at the heavyweight heavyweight match, which clinched the victory for Harvard. I believe they're going to play the national anthem, so that'll give us an opportunity to step aside, hit the reset button, and we'll get things going in just a couple of moments as we'll have the rumble and tumble wrestling and gymnastics right here on ESPN. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been... Well, there's a good look at the wrestling mat, which is, uh, we're up high here at the uh, Pizzatola Sports Center. Packed house here on hand for this matchup featuring the uh, Brown Bears and Sacred Heart Pioneers in wrestling, and then Brown, Southern Connecticut, Long Island University, and Rhode Island College in gymnastics. We're going to get it all started on the wrestling match in your top left corner. You'll see the uh, Brown Bears wrestling. The uh, looks like it is, as David mentioned, the uh, beam will be at Rhode Island College. Brown will be on the floor in your top right corner. And that puts Southern Connecticut in front of us here. I'm sorry, LIU in front of us here on the bars. Should be fun. Brown starting on the floor exercise. A lot of gymnasts say that that is their favorite event. It definitely leaves the most room for creativity, creativity for sure and expression if you will as it's almost a dance routine of sorts so brown looks like they will start there and now we have some mixing and matching it looks like maybe southern connecticut's moving over to the floor yeah we were Already told some moving parts yeah we were told southern connecticut was opening on the uh on the vault so uh and now it appears that brown is actually going over to the vault and Rhode Island College and, uh, yes, Rhode Island College is going to be on the beam. Yeah, so the only switch from what we outlined is just Southern Connecticut State and Brown switching spots. Brown will start on the vault, Southern Connecticut on the mat for the floor exercise. And for wrestling, Mike, they'll start in the 125-pound weight class, 
and work their way up. It is senior day, so they are recognizing the Brown seniors on the mat. Senior Cade Wilson out there right now with his parents at the 197-pound weight class. They saw Reese Fry at 125 pounds, and certainly the senior class has had a unique experience, no to say the least. No question about it as they missed that entire year due to COVID-19. We all know that, but it's been great to see them come back and get a few wins this year. Talk about a hot start. Out at the Binghamton Open, Mike, they finished fifth out of 17 to kick off the season. So any signs of rust from that COVID year were clearly put to the wayside. And since then, they've put together a 3-8 and eight record. I think they have a really good chance to get win number four here today against a Sacred Heart team that has just one win on their year. Yeah, Sacred Heart won its opening meet of the season against American and has struggled in Eastern competition since. Looks like just some final warm-ups on the vault and the floor, the beam as well, and then things will get underway. Yeah, they just had the announcement that they can begin the warm-up passes. Again, the wrestling match will start in just a moment at 125. It was announced as Reese Fry for Brown, I believe, it's going to be, uh, I believe it's going to be Vincent Malazzo weighing in for Sacred Heart. Malazzo coming in with a 1-5 and five record. Has had to cut quite a bit of weight from last year when he was at 141 pounds. But one of a handful in the stable of 125 pounders for the Pioneers. Malazzo, the sophomore from Comac, New York, went to Comac High School at that 125-pound weight class. And we'll start off here today. It has a height advantage. Yeah, she usually does the all-around, and it's kind of building up towards that. She had a tremendous showing the other day, did Costa on the bars. As uh, it looks like they're getting ready to get 130 Three started out in the middle of the mat for Brown on the wrestling side. It's going to be Nikki Cabanillas matched up against Petrillo, Anthony Petrillo of Sacred Heart. Do you have an extra set of eyes for me, Mike? I'm trying to keep track of everything. Over on the Rhode Island College on the balance beam, Kelsey Gates did fall off of the beam. She immediately got back up, but that will be a deduction. And then on the mat, Brianna Daniels gets things going for the Owls. Yeah, good tumble pass, her first run through. Meanwhile, on the mat, top left, now on the bottom of your screen, is the 133-pound weight class. That's about 30 seconds into your first period between Nikki Cabanillas and Anthony Petrillo. Few opponents in common for Cabanillas and Petrillo. Daniels getting ready for her next pass as well on the floor. It'll come from the far corner to the near side. Still nothing going between Cabanillas and Petrillo on the bottom. Here comes the pass. Pretty clean finish to it. Didn't get particularly deep in the corner. But overall, a clean routine in the floor exercise for Southern Connecticut's to Brianna Daniels. Daniels starts things off. She usually competes on the balance beam and vault as well. As you take a look at the final pass there, good point, Mike. She didn't get all the way into the corner, maybe a little bit more length that she wanted from corner to corner, but a good start and a clean floor exercise for the Owls. Cabanillas' time expires, and it is, in fact, Cabanillas' choice. And a good vault. You can hear the cheers on the back just off of your screen as it's LIU in the bottom left on the bars and Rhode Island College on your beam, bottom right quarter of your screen. I believe that's their third competitor on the beam, David. Should be Jessica Nugent, unless we missed one. Hannah King went second. Kelsey Gates started things off for Rhode Island College on the beam. Quick escape for Cabanillas gives him a one nothing lead as 
LIU celebrates a good vo uh, bars routine in front of us. A little stumble at the end on the uh, first pass for Southern Connecticut's Lo Lexi Brashear. Yeah, Lexi Bracker from Oakton, Virginia, went to Oakton High School. She's just a freshman at only 5'3". Trying to follow up Brianna Daniels' first floor exercise. Cabanillas, a good shot, meanwhile. Denied by Petrillo, again leading 1-0. Only about six seconds to get out of that escape. And it looks like an 8-2-5, the score on that most recent balance beam for Rhode Island College. Yeah, a couple falls. Yeah, balance beam is tough. It's only six inches across. Cabanillas trying for the shot. Bracker trying to get across and will finish clean. And we get a whistle on the wrestling match, meanwhile. Quick look at the clock with about 30 seconds left in the second period at 133 pounds. There's a look at that last tumble pass, the front flip. Making a fairly clean end. Couple of good bar routines for LIU. Just notched a 9.75 a second ago as the second period comes to an end on the mat at 1.33. Still a 1 nothing lead for Cabanillas. And that vault has wrapped up. That's usually one of the quicker events for gymnastics as now LIU is going crazy. They had a really strong start on the bars and right now seem to be in the driver's seat out of the four teams in their respective events. Good mat return for Cabanillas, but unfortunately for him, Petrillo able to sneak out and that match is tied at one as another clean dismount on the bars right in front of us. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, Mike. You gotta stick the dismount both on the vault, floor, really all four events. The landing is probably the most important part of any given routine. We'll see what this score is. It looks like it's in the nines. And I believe it's an even nine flat on that most recent uneven bars routine for Long Island. From the brown bench, so they concur with the takedown call. And that's a big play by Petrillo right by the edge of the circle to make that happen against Cabanillas. Cabanillas. Next up on the floor, sorry Mike, is Sidney Wilson, third out of six. Cabanillas does Owls. get the escape point, but he's only got 40 seconds to work with. And my guess is Petrillo will be very defensive here. If Cabanillas can get a takedown, he put himself in a position to win this match, but Petrillo's not giving him much. Trying to shake and they're that gonna right get a hand stall. three. Yeah, stall warning coming against Petrillo for grabbing the hand there. Clock stops with 27.2 left. And Petrillo doing a good job of defending. Cabanillas knows what the clock says. And he's running on short time now. Another strong bars routine for LIU. And a three, two decision for Sacred Hearts, Anthony Petrillo. Nice job by Petrillo against Cabanillas. And Cabanillas is one of the stronger wrestlers on the Brown side. Hey, he made one mistake. Yep. And uh, a correction, May Lee Costa finishing up just now on the vault. She went a little bit back with her right foot as she stuck the landing, but was greeted by a team of Brown Bears gymnasts who were excited to welcome her. And now Brown will wait for the next rotation. Three out of six done on the floor as well. 
John Lafferty will wrestle for Sacred Heart against Brown's Timothy Levine. Lafferty coming in with a five and 10 mark. Levine leads the Bears in overall wins and I think he's second on the team in pins. 16 and 12 mark for Levine. Levine coming off an impressive 7-2 win over Kenny Herman of Harvard the other night. Induced the hammerlock coupled with the ankle, secure what is called a bow and arrow, which does put a lot of strain on John Lafferty of Sacred Heart in the top left corner. And while LIU continuing to go to work on the bars. Some soft applause finishing up for Long Island. Not the routine that she wanted, but Long Island had a really strong for a minute 15, nearing a minute 20. I believe for Southern Connecticut, that's Brooke Burkhart. Yep, she's fourth out of six. She'll be followed by Hannah Zebdi and Cassidy Girolamo. Floor usually taking the longest out of the four, as these routines usually lasting around two minutes apiece. Nice pass there. Strong finish deep in the corner, and love watching the team cheer on the floor exercises. No matter the team, it's always one of the most enthusiastic events. Yeah, I saw the other week, a couple weeks back, we saw Burkhart, Zebdi, and Girolamo all competing for Southern Connecticut here in a tri meet a few weeks back. All had strong finishes on the floor. And they're gonna get a stall warning on Lafferty. And second one means a point for Levine. Burkhart's looking good right now. She's another freshman from Haymarket, Virginia. A lot of Virginia natives on this Central Connecticut team. Southern Connecticut, excuse me. Her teammates pleased with that routine. And that'll be time after a period. Timothy Levine, five nothing lead and more significantly, two minutes and 43 seconds means that's really a six nothing lead because of the riding point. Levine's gonna choose bottom and uh, I believe if he can get a quick escape point, that'll take this to, uh, it is a quick escape. He's almost out. Lafferty struggling to get to mat return here and oh, he gets him back down. So good mat return there by Lafferty. Levine yeah. will have to try and step out of it a second time. Gets up onto all fours, man. Look at this. Wow. There's Levine. That's what you get. And there's a reversal, which will now take that with the riding time point to now major decision point. And he's got him locked in. Levine had him on his back and a reversal there on the other way. So you'll get two points near fall, then a two-point reversal. Wow. Action fast and furious at 141. Yeah, no question. This has been the most entertaining of the three that we've seen on the mat so far. Both are going at it, and both have had some great moves. Yeah, you, you tend to see that when you get to these middleweights. You get that combination of speed and strength. Yep. And Levine has the escape point. So he is in major decision territory is Levine. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go for another quick take down floor, but the other three, it seems like, have almost wrapped up. Rhode Island College finishing up on the beam as we speak. The Sharks, I'm interested to see their team score. It looks like they really put on a clinic on the uneven bars. There weren't too many mistakes. Right. Oh, there's more back points coming for Levine. Another near fall, and with the riding time, I believe he has to get to 15 points. He's up 16-2. 
Action slowing down a little bit here in the 141. Both yep. are a bit more methodical now. A little bit of stalling, I'm sure, as the uh, Lafferty really, really struggling against Levine. He thought about releasing him, then gets the armbar back. The riding time is locked in now. And Levine has him locked in. Pulls his leg back over. And has it locked. Is it a fall or a technical fall? Uh, Levine has him. I can't believe Nick Grosso hasn't put his hand down yet. Lafferty doing his best. Lafferty's out of gas. Still down now. Yeah, no, he's, he's pretty much got him. Yeah, I, 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 he's Still. got that left shoulder just barely up. But either way, you know, Coach, Coach Beckerman, and that's it. There's the near fall, and there's the technical fall. Wow. A 21 to 2 victory for Timothy Levine at 141. That's a clinic. That was awesome. That was a, a great match to watch for Levine, another freshman, and he won via fall at Long Island. Now he gets the technical fall here. Fifth out of sixth on the floor is Hannah Zebdi for Southern Connecticut. Brown will move to the bars next. They're warming up there. And Long Island will wait for the uneven or the balance beam to clear before they move over into the second rotation. Ricky Cabanillas will wrestle Rafael Lovano. Lovano, five and three on the season. He started his career at Buffalo. Transferred to Sacred Heart a couple years back. 15 and 20 career mark. Yeah, Leviano wrestled in seven matches his sophomore year. Got two wins in his sophomore season. He's from Long Island. Went to Buffalo High School. And he goes up against the second Cabanillas brother. They're twins, right? They are. They look exactly the same, so I figured as much. A good shot there by Ricky at 149, trying to tie up Lovano. And a great uh, job on the balance beam to stay on the bar. I believe it was either Olivia Keys or Emma Tucker who nearly lost her balance, stuck out that left foot to stabilize, but that deduction will be a lot less than if it was a fall. Well, Hannah Zebdi on the floor and we're going to get the danger point I think for Lovano no no they don't I thought they were getting the danger point but didn't happen two minutes left in the uh, first period in the top left corner Bears are moving over to the bars LIU is switching over to the vault So we can't get this wrong. This means that Rhode Island College will be on the floor and <laughs> exactly. Southern Connecticut will be over on the beam. And I think we got timeout for blood for Lovano. I like Zebdi's choice of music. I'm always interested to see what gymnasts pick on their mix. She's got a little Drake instrumental here. See, I couldn't name that tune in <laughs> 100 notes. You had it on the second. I know my uh, limitations. There we go. There we go. That's why, that's why we're a great team, Mike. <laughs> yeah, they're checking Cabanillas, who has his forehead split open. And with blood, they are going to take their time, try and give him, get him bandaged up. They bumped heads as uh, you don't want to see an injury forfeit, that's for sure. Yeah, you got to be careful with The scorekeepers down at ground level will be able to pass that on at the end of every cycle. So we'll be sure to let you know the individual highs for each team on each event and where the teams stand as we make our way through. 
I, so the abacus you brought is just for show. Exactly. I exactly. see. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's just I for saw you. you. I saw you I over there. I was, I was doing my best, but I need a calculator from the great athletic staff downstairs. You and your abacus, or me and my abacus, I should say. I love me a good abacus. What's the plural of abacus, Mike? Uh, you know, my guess is it's probably abacuses. Okay. Let's look it up. It could be abacai. It is. Yeah. That goes back to Latin right there. The plural of a U.S. word is I. Uh, I got a couple of... Uh, I got a couple ancient languages in my pocket, but Latin's, I know you do. You speak like 18. Yeah, uh, no, you wouldn't go that far, but I wasn't far off though. On on the floor, last one for the Owls is Cassidy Girolamo. Yeah, Girolamo will round things out. Sixth out of six, following up Hannah Zebdi. And I'm always interested to see how gymnastics coaches stagger on the floor. Some put their best first, some put their best last. We'll see. Coach how Knox is a, does. Is, a, is a best last guy. Well, here we go. Girolamo will be the finale on the floor. Cabanillas has his head bandaged, gets underneath Lovano, who's got him by the ankle. Still neutral, says the official. No control, a minute 15. And a danger call as they got him behind the head. And a bit of a stumble from Girolamo on the floor on her last pass. Still getting high fives and excited after. It's how you defend someone. Sure. Um, because if someone, if you know someone's going to be an aggressive shot, it might change how you're going to try and counter that. Got it. But uh, as far as the mentality of, uh, of the wrestler, Doesn't uh, change too much. I don't think so. Going back to gymnastics, Brown will move over to the uneven bars. We'll get a good view of that right in front of us. And the order will be Lord McKean, Paige Richter, Taylor Schultz, Abby Contello, Ella Pooley, and May Lee Costa. Keep an eye on those six as they go. That's our best vantage point. Rhode Island College gets warmed up as we have just over three minutes left in the warm-up between rotations. Maylee Costa with a nine. So Nick Palumbo will wrestle at 157 against Brown's Jack Pukina. Brown's gonna get going on the uneven bars. Starting things off for the Bears right in front of us will be Lauren McKean. On the floor for Rhode Island College is Julia Yitz. Uh, Yitz's best score so far, a 9-4-2-5 on the floor. Could be the uh, one of the top matches we see here today. Bikina and Palumbo. Palumbo on the season, a seven win, three loss mark. Has climbed into the top 75 nationally at 157. Bikina, 11 wins against seven losses. Bouncing back from injury as the first bear concludes the bars in front of us. Yeah, it was Lauren McKean. She bent forward a little bit as she landed. Saw a little bit of a head shake as she finished, but strong start for the Bears. And remember, they're in second place right now, trailing LIU by just .075. Still no score, but a minute and 10 seconds gone. And the fight against Union, a team with whom they were tied in the standings, but then got the bonus point by beating them in the shootout. Not bad. Meanwhile, down at Quinnipiac, the Brown women closed out their season with a four-point weekend, defeating the number nine team in the country, Quinnipiac, by a 1-0 score. 
How yeah. about the enthusiasm behind that women's hockey team? They just got better and better over the course of the I year. I'll tell you. Year one under a new head coach. You know, that's all she was really hoping for throughout the year was to get better. And, you know, talking to Coach Todd Beckerman of the wrestling team, also a young club here. Right. Saying, you know, they just wanted to take advantage of every opportunity they had to compete, having missed out on so many opportunities over the last couple of years. Paige Richter has to come off the uneven bars early from the high bar. Looks like she's going to get some extra chalk on her right hands and try to finish off this routine. Well, Rhode Island College, tumble pass in your top right corner of your screen. Little stumble at the end. Yeah, the four on the floor for, or the six on the floor for Rhode Island College will be Julia Yitz, Allison Kleena Brile, Jessica Nugent, Emma Tucker, Olivia Keys, and Kelsey Gates. And a nice rebound and dismount by Paige Richter. And a great reversal for Jack Bokina. Gets him back within a point of Palumbo in the top left corner of your screen. And a takedown secured by Palumbo. Now there's some look, look in at the beam as Jack Bokina of Brown on the wrestling mat. We'll come back there in a second. Just got another escape point to pull himself within two and a fall mm. off the beam. And it looks like the second score on the beam was an 8-8 after the 9.825, so. What a great shot by Palumbo. Be two, oh, a four, near fall, four. Ooh, great work by Palumbo. Schultz is looking really good on the beam, or the bars right now for Brown. She goes from low to high. Dismount coming soon, right here. Oh, she stuck it. She yeah, killed she it. she killed it. And her team knows it. Mike, by no means am I a gymnastics expert, but I know how to read the reaction by the gymnasts as they finish their events. You can tell, oh, I didn't like that landing or that wasn't my best. Right there, that reaction says it all for Taylor Schultz. She is still doling out the high fives, just an outstanding routine for yeah, Schultz. Could see it on her face, the joy. Riding time is secured. So major decision territory for Palumbo on the top of your screen for Sacred Heart. And it looks like Kleinabril got a 9.35 on the floor for Rhode Island College. A 9.6 for the Owls. The Owls right now are putting on a clinic on the vault. They've been steady Eddie on their second rotation. Trying to get that leg secured. Palumbo. Schultz wearing the sunglasses after her great routine. Here's the fourth. Another good landing. So Ryan Bolatino for Sacred Heart cut back from 174 to get to 165 as the get another look here at the bar finish. Right. You'll see some good turn. Picks up some velocity yep. and... Perfect. She went with the full extension, didn't tuck the knees, went end over end, and nailed the landing. If I'm keeping up with... Uh, Harrison Trahan, who got hurt. Rothrock, who is a nationally ranked Greco-Roman wrestler in high school. Wow. What's the difference? Uh, you don't see guys on a mat in Greco-Roman wrestling. It's a lot of upper body. Got it. Actually, you wouldn't even know they're the same sport, really. I wonder what that transition was like when he got to college. Um, you see a few guys do it and do it well. Um, nice 
Nice pass on the floor for Rhode Island College. Most recent score on the floor for Rhode Island was a 9-4. Two more to go on the beam on the bars for Brown. They'll finish off with Ella Pooley and May Lee Costa. Central Connecticut State is done. I keep saying Central. Southern Connecticut State is done on the vault. What you see with Greco-Roman wrestlers is they really are um, upper body dominated. You can't, in, in Greco-Roman wrestling, you can't use your legs. Got it's it. all upper body. So yeah. you'll see Keegan Rothrock really likes to use his arms. See right here, he, I'd be going for a trip. He's got him on one leg, but going for a trip is not natural for a Greco-Roman wrestler. Right. Rothrock trying to turn him, still even. As the Bears are on the bars in your top right corner of your screen. Another good landing. Brown right now is keeping pace and probably even passing LIU. Now remember, the beam, I think, and I think most gymnasts would agree, is the hardest of the four events. So LIU right now has lost a little bit of footing with some eights over on the balance beam. We'll see how Brown is able to do. They will go to the balance beam next. Meanwhile, on your lower right, Keegan Rothrock has a 2-0 lead. It secured a takedown of Sacred Heart's Ryan Bolatino. Uh, to wind down here as he got the reversal. Trying to turn Rothrock late here in the first. And can Rothrock get up and get an escape? No, he cannot. Sacred Heart making a little push here. They did so in the last weight class yeah. as well. And now the Pioneers are going nuts. Yeah, he's got a chance for back points. It's going to be a two-point near fall. The coaching staff wanted four. And Rothrock is just lucky he didn't get pinned. No doubt. The count was going by the head referee. Yeah, he's got, he's got to get that down to a five count to really start thinking about a four-point near fall. Didn't quite have that kind of time. And after a shaky first floor exercise for Rhode Island College, they put together a couple mid nines, a 9.425 most recently, and a great pass. As May Lee Costa will finish things up on the bars for Brown. Just nailed a tough move with a high degree of difficulty on the upper bar. Goes back to the low. So we've decided that short of it being a handicap match, you and I are not getting on the wrestling mat together. Yep. yep. Um, and short of a lot of protective gear, probably not getting on the beam. Right. So I think that leaves you on the floor exercise, my I friend. Could I could try that one. Yeah. I could do a cartwheel or two, maybe. I wonder what the degree of difficulty is on a cartwheel. As you look here, May Lee Costa, the sixth and final gymnast on the uneven bars, spins the hands around, tucks the knees. Little step back. Little but step that's back, but that's a minor deduction, right? If you keep those two legs planted... You're in really, really good shape. One balance check with one leg is not the end of the world. Brown and LIU both did very well on the bars. Looks like a dismount on the balance beam as well. Their most recent score for the Sharks. Rothrock's in a whole heap of trouble. But... Bolatino can't get, because of Bolatino's pl placement, he, Rothrock is gonna have to go back to his belly. He couldn't get that second second shoulder down. Right. And a near fall four gives Sacred Heart an 8-2 lead. And with the riding time point secured, now you start thinking about major decision there for the Pioneers.
Finishing up on the beam and the floor. Vault and bars are done in rotation number two. A 9.7 on the most recent score for LIU. And after, again, a couple high eights, Mike, some high nines for the Sharks. Another near fall four on the left side of your screen. As the second period comes to an end means Sacred Heart's strategy in this one can now move from major decision to technical fall with a 13-2 lead and riding time just about secured. And it will be secured if Rothrock can't get out. Surprise he chose bottom. A good mat return there. And we're gonna get a warning, yeah, two hands clenched. That's gonna be a penalty call. Yep. It's gonna be a penalty call on, on Rothrock. That doesn't help his cause. Yeah, no question. Rothrock, a freshman from Belafonte. Uh, they, okay, they, yeah, they, they got it wrong. Um, I was gonna say, they, they put up the wrong wrist. It should have been on Palumbo, not Rothrock. Okay. I was going to say, there's no way Rothrock, and they put the wrong score up. I'm like, wait a second. And he's going to come back cross face. He's on the wrong side of Palumbo's head. I think this is the final floor exercise for Rhode Island College. Should be. This is Kelsey Gates. We'll finish things off. And again, Rhode Island College putting together some really solid scores. Another 9.75 for Rhode Island College on the floor exercise. And a 9.925 on the balance beam for LIU. So after a tough start, the Sharks may very well stay in first place after two rotations. A uh, fall off the beam isn't going to help. Keegan Rothrock has that left leg secured, but still no control as the third period comes to an end. The riding time point goes to Sacred Heart. A 13-5 win at 165. And with four matches to go, the dual meet between Sacred Heart and Brown is very much. Yeah, it's 14-11, still very much in, in balance. I mean, that's a huge four points, right? No yeah, they needed, they needed something. They needed a major right. decision somewhere along the line. And it used to go on the hour and a half straight. Right. Trying to see who was announced for Sacred Heart. Yes. So that brings us to 184 with, uh, you know, probably one of the more interesting matches we're going to see. At 184, it'll be for Brown, James Aranio, wrestling against Robert Hetherman of St. Karchla of, uh, of Ohio State, I think is 19-1. and one. Wow. So that, that, that 165 coming into the, the you know, Eastern Series of, uh, of Cornell is ranked third in the country, and I want to say at 149, Cornell's Yanni Diakamalis is number one in the country out of Cornell. So there are a lot of great wrestlers no out question. there. It's getting towards the end of the season, too, and NCAAs, you can almost taste them. They'll be in Detroit this year starting on March 17th. I was watching the Illinois Wisconsin dual meet a couple of weeks ago and had a chance to watch Oklahoma I was I was uh, wrestling against I think it was Oklahoma against maybe Iowa State yeah just some incredible results and speaking of some incredible results 5-3 the score here with uh, Sacred Heart Heffern and uh, Heatherman in the lead over Aranio and we'll choose bottom to start the second. And Lauren Lazaro will start on the beam for Brown. Six will go. Lauren Lazaro, Angela Zing, May Lee Costa will be third. McKenna Weiner, Abby Contello, and then Taylor Schultz, who had an outstanding bars score, will round it out. Still processing the scores here. I'll get you those in a moment. We do have the sheets in front of us, though. 
And it is close as Rhode Island definitely gains some ground on the floor exercise. Arrhenio slips out. Escape point for Sacred Hot. Wow, the Boston accent came out there a little I bit. I did it on purpose. <laughs> Did it on purpose. Every once in a while, I try and sneak Pops one in. Out, right? True to my orange line roots. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. We're going to get a stalemate call in the wrestling match in your right hand of your screen. LIU, a pretty good start on the floor. 8 to 11, the dual meet score of the wrestling match. And I have the scores for gymnastics through two rotations. Brown hopping LIU. Right now they are in first, 96.75. LIU trailing by just .35 points at 96.4. Running in third is still Southern Connecticut, 95.975. And Rhode Island College down at 94.45. Your leaders in each individual event so far as wrestling. Uh, Aranio gets a pin! Has a pin. A I got of action. It was 7-7. Seven, seven. Arrhenio able to come back. Was down. Was down in points. Was able to secure the leg. And Arrhenio comes away with a huge pin that will seal the dual meet victory for the Bears. There is no way now yep. for Sacred Heart to come back. Even if they are to win by pin in the last two, yep. the Bears are over the hump. Yeah, Brown's up 15 with two to go and a huge pin, back-to-back -back pins for Brown to really put them in the driver's seat. Remember, this was 14-11 just a moment ago and all of a sudden, two straight pins for the Bears. For well, the gymnastics events, real quick, Mike, we got the individual leaders still a tie for first on the vault between May Lee Costa and Julia Bedella at 9.75. No one on Southern Connecticut was able to best that score. Olivia Keys right now is in first on the floor. She had a 9.8 for Rhode Island College to beat Hannah Zebdi's 9.775 for Southern. As you look at the beam, the leader is Ilka Juk, 9.925 on the balance beam. That is far and away first right now. And Mira, Mara Titarsolej still in first on the uneven bars with a 9.9. May Lee Costa had a brown best 9.875 on the last rotation. Cade Wilson, one of a couple of three brown seniors. On the mat at 197 for his final home dual meet. Would love to punctuate it here with a victory. Taking on Joseph Acousti. Lee Costa's getting ready to hop on the beam as well. Angela Zing just finishing up, and Lauren Lazaro started things off with a 9.625. With a strong beam performance, Mike, Brown would be in the driver's seat going to the floor. And you got to think that they'll feel good closing on the floor in a home meet up going into the final rotation, but they still have four more to hit the beam. There's a look at the bars. Nothing going at 0-0. The score with a minute gone in the 197 match. That is Southern Connecticut on the uneven bars. Last week, the bars for Southern Connecticut Kind of was their undoing. They uh, usually score a little higher, but they lost by a, about a quarter of a point to Westchester, and that was the difference in the meet. Right. They did make some points up. Below, and it starts to get fishy, especially, Mike, when you're stacking a few eights together. That's when you can get yourself in trouble. Meanwhile, with the takedown and about 45 seconds of riding time, Cade Wilson is in control at 197. That's LIU performing in the floor exercise. I think it's their second competitor on the floor. Yeah, for the Sharks, um, it will be Katie, Katie Koopman. Koopman. As Ella Barrington started it off with a 9.625. Remember, LIU falling to second. They trail Brown by .35 points halfway through. Oh, 
almost done here on the mat as well. I know the final score is not decided, but the winner will be the Brown Bears. Sacred Heart has struggled this year. Just one win on their season. One and eight are the Pioneers. Oh, a complete flop in front of us on the bars. It just missed. Landed yeah. right on her back. And always the transition from high to low, Mike, is always something as a coach, you hold your breath. You want to make sure that those go seamlessly. Obviously no injuries, which is the biggest thing because the uneven bars, I mean, if you land the wrong way, it can be scary. There was a gymnast that I covered last year at Western Michigan, Mike. She missed her entire freshman year because she fell off head first and almost was paralyzed. I, uh, Trainer came over, stabilized her neck. She fought her way back and competed on the uneven bars her sophomore year. Talk about guts. Her name's Peyton Murphy, just an outstanding gymnast out in the MAC. So I'm looking at Cade Wilson and Acousti right now, and Wilson was actually wrapped around Acousti like a pretzel and uh, off the ground completely. Here he is... Lee Costa after a 9-5. So Brown right now keeping pace on the bars, or the, on the beam, excuse me, a 9-6-5 and a 9.5. Here's Lee Costa's dismount. She goes with a relatively easy one and nails it. May Lee Costa's best, best beam of the season was 9-8-2-5. Meanwhile, the left of your screen, it's a 2-2 two, two score on the mat. For w Wilson at 197, you'll see the dismount here after recovering from the fall. Wilson with another takedown, meanwhile. Leads four to two. Comes back, trying to get a half on him. Secure the left foot. He's in a good position, is Wilson. Akusi. Be careful about being called for stalling. Wilson able to turn, stays with him. Matt returned down to his back, or his stomach, I should say. Riding time will be secured for Wilson as well. Short time here in the second period. Wilson just can't let him go for an escape. Comes back cross face. Needs to get a mat return, he will not, but he won't let him go either. And will take a 4-2 lead into the third period. I don't think that this is Drake. No, quite certain it was not. LIU coming out to greet Ella Castellanos, third out of six on the floor for the Sharks. A reversal for Cade Wilson, meanwhile, as the Bears continue to do their work on the beam on the left of your screen. Cade Wilson trying to put the finishing touches on a decision. He's got riding time secured. He leads six to two. So now it's really a seven two lead with this riding time point. And Lee Costa with a 9-2. That score that you see on your screen is always going to be reflective of the gymnast just before. Double clutch on the dismount by Southern Connecticut, but the Owls responding well after the initial fall in rotation three. I think we know who our top two teams will be in our bottom two. The order is yet to be determined as the fourth of six dismounts for the Bears. That was McKenna Weiner. She'll be followed by Abby Contello and Taylor Schultz. Schultz, we talked about her awesome uneven bars routine, Mike, and she got a little bit overshadowed by May Lee Costa. Take a look here. This is McKenna Weiner. Oof. Goes off to the side and nails it. Just a bit of a little stutter, hiccup, yeah. but a very solid dismount. Going back to Schultz, though, Mike, she had a really, really good 9-8 on the uneven bars. Second on Brown behind only May Lee Costa. And on the first pass for the Sharks. Almost fell off the mat. Almost fell. 
And it also, remember, that white line does signal what is in bounds. And she was close to out. Very close. Cade Wilson, eight seconds away from a 7-3 to three victory at 197. And the Bears will come away with another win, this one at 197, a 7-3 win. And Brown's dual meet mark is now 29-11 to 11 over Sacred Heart. Mike, you've seen a lot of this team this year. How does today's performance stack up against some other matches? Um, you know, I, I, you got to look at Sacred Heart wrestling a few guys out sure. of weight class as a, you know, maybe makes it a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more lopsided than you would think. What I will say is, you still have to take care of business, and you know that the Bears were able to get results when they needed to. Uh, is a sign of growth for this team. So in that respect, I think Coach Beckerman's gonna be pretty happy with what his Bears have brought to the brought to the mat here today. A lot of energy, guys taking care of business where they've had to, and uh, overall, you know, nice to see a couple of the seniors get wins as well in one of their final matches here. So a 9-6-5 coming from McKenna Weiner. You saw an awesome dismount on the uneven bars for Southern Connecticut as they went absolutely nuts right in front of us. Rhode Island College has wrapped up on the vault. I do have to note, though, Abby Contello did fall off of the beam, so that will be a major deduction. It will put her below nine, and we'll see how these scores shake out. LIU right now has looked solid on the floor, a 9-8-5 coming in recently for the Sharks. Got to think it's between the Bears and the Sharks for first place here today. The last wrestling match of the afternoon is on for the 285-pound division, Lear Quinton and Nick Copley. Quinton was pinned the other day by Jeffrey Cooks of Harvard while uh, gave up a lot of weight, though. These two guys are a little bit closer together. There's a lot of range in that heavyweight division. Lear Quinton weighs in probably around 210, and uh, Copley has secured... A takedown. What a pass by LIU. That's the highest I've seen any gymnast get on the floor. Unbelievable by the Sharks. Not sure who this is. It's either Reagan Jones or Amanda Liu, but she got up sky high for LIU. Unbelievable. Excited to see the finish here on the floor. This could be big for LIU to gain some ground on Brown. After two rotations, they only trailed by .35 points. I think it's Lou. I agree. I think it is Lou. And that would make sense as she would be the final gymnast on the floor. And just based on what I've seen, the best. A career best 9.85 on the floor for Lou coming into today's meet. Here comes a pass. Not as good as the first, but you got to think that that degree of difficulty on the second to last pass is huge. Lear Quinton has Copley secured and comes away with a pin. And the Bears will finish off with another fall. Mike, what a response for Lear Quinton, too. He lost 6 to 3 against LIU. He's another young guy, only a sophomore who gets a pin, and they're a 975 most recently for Brown, so they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with LIU. Amanda Liu was awesome on the floor. So Lear Quinton, James Arrhenio, Reese Fry, all come away with wins, by, and uh, Drew Cleary all come away with pins, and a technical fall for Timothy Levine as well, as the wrestlers will head off the mat. A 35 to 11 win for the Brown Bears over the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Pretty dominant, Mike. Looked like they were the better team pretty much from the first weight class on. Some really strong performances in the middle weight class for the Pioneers, but Brown got three pins in the last four weight classes, which was great. I think we have one more gymnast. Oh, and a complete flop on the, uh, didn't even make it to the corner. A face plant, in fact. 
on the first pass. Yeah, there might have been a, a, a quick shuffling of the deck by LIU because it definitely was Lou. And on our sheet, we thought she was going last. She went most recently, and this also is an LIU shark going right now. This might be Titar Solej, a late sub in for LIU. Just looking at their roster sheet, trying to do a little best guess. And another really great dismount for Southern Connecticut over here on the bars. They're gaining some ground as well. Remember, there was that fall earlier for the Owls, but the rest have put on a clinic right in front of us. And Brown, those scores have stayed very high on the balance beam. I think the lowest we've seen was the, the one fall. Yeah. But everybody has had at least the one major foul. Right. And just one more pass, one more rotation for the uh, gymnasts. We'll come in just a moment. And that'll do it for the third rotation out of four. Going to be very interested to see the final scores as we head in to the fourth and final coming up in a few moments. So I think with that, David and I are going to put our headsets down for a moment. <laughs> our final score of the wrestling match, 35 to 11, three of the four rotations down. Brown will move to the floor and everyone else will rotate accordingly we'll step aside this is the rumble and tumble classic here from the pizzatola sports center the ivy league on espn in some other highlights included a solid win at 141 from timothy levine and after a couple of wins in a row for sacred heart yep. the bears needed something they got back-to-back -back pins from cleary and Arenio at 174 and 184 and then they got themselves a decision and a pin from Wilson and Quinton at 197 and 285. Just to close things out, a good day on the mat for the Bears. No question, Mike. And, and look at the final score, 35 to 11. Remember, it was 14 to 11. And then Brown outscores Sacred Heart 24 to nothing. Excuse me, 21. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's my abacus at? I was 21 just going to say. to nothing over the last four weight classes, including three pins. Great day for the Bears on the mat and Sacred Heart. Definitely a down year. They're retooling a little bit, but no question that they will be competitive going forward. As we get set for the final rotation, Brown will be on the floor. Southern Connecticut on the beam. Rhode Island College takes to the bars, and Long Island is on the vault. Yeah, there you see Long Island had a great start to things on the bars. That was their first event. The Bears then answered with their own great routine on the bars as well. And a routine that was good enough at the time yeah. to give the Bears a slight lead after two. And they didn't have one score on the uneven bars below a nine. Paige Richter was six out of six with an even nine flat. And that's a solid score on the uneven bars. May Lee Costa with a 9.85. That led Brown. Mir well, Look at the LIU Sharks and then Brown. This was them on the bars. Solid dismount by the Bears as their final four, Taylor Schultz, Abby Cantella, Ella Pooley, and May Lee Costa 
98, 9425, 97, and 9875. Great finish for the Bears as this was Southern Connecticut on the bars in the third of four rotations. Now the Bears head to the floor now. It was Southern on the bars in that last rotation. Watch this dismount. Once, twice, and the speed to finish. Pretty much perfect. Pretty much, as now they'll finish warming up for two minutes and 45 seconds on the warm-up clock. When we come back, we'll have an update through three rotations of the scores and the fourth rotation in just a moment. This is the Rumble and Tumble from Providence and Brown University. This is the Ivy League on ESPN. Come on. Not for Cho, though, because he's a forward, you know? Yeah. There's nobody from... Uh Floor exercise for Brown, bars for Rhode Island College, beam for Southern Connecticut, and vault for LIU. Quick run through the scores, Mike. LIU moves back into first place, 145.125. And in second are the Brown Bears, 144.55. So they trail LIU by just over a half of a point in third by more than, or just under two, is Southern Connecticut, and in fourth is Rhode Island College. The Owls, 142.7. Rhode Island College at 140.425. And LIU has the winner, or the leader, in every single event that they've competed in. Mara Titarsolej with a 9.9 on the uneven bars. Ilka Juk with a 9.925 on the beam. And Jalaya Bedmaster, 9.85 on the floor. The leaders on the vault is a tie between Browns, Julia Bedell, and May Lee Costa, each with a 9.75. But LIU, when you have the individual leader in three out of four events, you're in good shape. Yeah, and they have a, a good half point lead now on the Bears, which could be hard to make up on the floor exercise. In terms of each event, Brown right now with the leading score on the vault with a team score of 48.4. And again, LIU with the highest score in the other three. LIU had a 48.475 on the bars, a 47.925 on the beam, and a 48.725 on the floor. And Katie Koopman of LIU just nailed a 9.825 for the first vault. We'll get an eye on the Bears score in just a moment on the floor exercise. There's a look over at the vault and a little stumble at the end. So maybe I'm looking at a 9825 from earlier. There's the vo uh, beam and a fall off the beam for Southern Connecticut. That's uh, Delaney Fields, or is that Noelle Macias? Yep. Macias starts things off for the Owls. The six on the beam will go Macias, Molly Froman, Emily Call, Angel Lee, Amelia Diaz, and Maddie Tansauni. The six on the floor for Brown. You saw the first nine from seven. Lauren Lazaro with a 9-7. McKenna Weiner will be next up. Laura Swords. Angela Zing, Abby Walsh, and Julia Bazell, Bedell, excuse me. May Lee Costa's day is done. That was a real good vault over there for LIU as well. And Brown can gain a half point. A half point is doable in one event, so it's still within striking distance. But Brown really cannot afford much error at all on the floor, and they might need some help over on the vault as well.
Southern Connecticut and Rhode Island College are pretty much locked in at third and fourth. Can you name this artist, Mike? I got this one. Can you? Cardi B. Listen, man, if it was made <laughs> after like 1993 <laughs> and played on anything Follow other me than on Spotify, I will show you. I will. I will. I will keep you up to date with all this. I can. Yeah, I can help you out. Listen, if it doesn't involve a real heavy drum beat and a lot of electric guitars originating somewhere sure. in and around Seattle, <laughs> forget it. Second finishing up is McKenna Weiner. Really solid for Brown. I love how they pass around this pair of sunglasses. It's the most recent gymnast to compete in any event. They hand the sunglasses off. It's a nice little team tradition that they have. As Weiner will wear them for the time being, Laura Swords will be next up on the floor for Brown. Laura Swords. For Rhode Island College on the bars. I think we're on the second. It'll be Jessica Nugent. I may be not giving myself enough credit, but I have a pretty uh, classical taste in music. Let's put it that way. I hear you. I hear you. Nugent, who's right now going to get going on the bars, she has competed in the vault and the beam and the floor. So she's going for the all around today. Grazed the floor with her feet there, did the, did Nugent. Good recovery up there on the beam. Nearly and stumbled, but was able to regain her balance, as it were. And how about this, Mike? The only four all-arounders today will all be from Rhode Island College. Every other team is using a bit more of a specialized lineup to try to get their best team score. Right now, the leader in the all-around competition is Keys. That is Olivia Keys with a score of 28.75 through three events. Swords is feeling herself as Weiner, Mike, notches up a 9775. So two up, two down, two good scores for the Brown Bears on the floor exercise as their hopes of finishing fourth out of four are still very much alive. Swords with another strong pass. Swords' best score on the floor this season has been 9525. Swords a great finish. And the passes were all strong. The team is fired up. This should be at least a 9-7, probably pushing a 9-8. Go back to the uneven bars, Rhode Island College. Continuing on, the six for Rhode Island will go Tucker, Nugent, Lowe, Schlawitt, Gates and Keys. Goes from high bar to low. Knees hit the ground as she swung around. Dismount coming here. One, two, and a little off. Yeah. And again, reading the reaction. She knew it. She knew it. Oh, when she hit, you saw when she hit her knees yeah. on the mat that disrupts the momentum a it, little bit. Absolutely, the physics of it. For sure. I'm excited to see this score coming in from Lara Swords. Again, Lazaro started off with a nine-seven. Weiner with a nine-seven-seven-five. 
Now we go back to the beam with the Owls. I believe this is Angel Lee. Well, Sarah Carver Milne, the Brown head coach, on the sideline with her Bears, is watching things over, waiting for Swords to score. And I believe LIU is done on yes. the vault because the vault obviously takes the it's least fast. amount of time. So all they can do is just sit around and watch. They are going to talk things over with their head coach who has some post-game notes. And here is Angela Zing. Just a 9-5-5 for Swords. Maybe a lower degree of difficulty because I didn't see much room for deductions on her routine. Third to last for Brown here. Trying to close in on LIU. Got to think of passes coming up for Zing from corner to corner. She'll load up here and try to hit the mat by her team. She's going for something big. You can tell by the look in her face. One, two, three. Got and it. And got it. Brown's doing everything they can right now on the floor. There's no question. And, Mike, I get again, I think – Coming back to the fact that they're ending on the floor gives them a little bit of mojo here in the closing moments of this match. Just two left on the floor for Brown. Great start on the beam for the Owls. This is Amelia Diaz. Incredible athleticism on display both on the wrestling mat and across all four gymnastics events here in the Rumble and Tumble. And again, the balance beam just such a high margin or low margin for error, I should say. And a good recovery in the end. Five meters long. Four inches wide, we say? Four. Incredible. Three point nine to be exact. They couldn't give him the last tenth of an inch. Come on. Must have something to do with the metric system. <laughs> so Zing gets a nine seven two five. So that's three scores of nine seven plus. I got to think if Brown wants to make a push, though, they need that one really big score here on the floor. Abby Walsh. Jalia Bedmaster has the high out of all floor competitors today for LIU with a nine eight five. Abby Walsh at 9-6, her season best. On the floor now, a little stumble at the end. And Bedell will finish off on the floor, and her season high is a 9-8-2-5. So they'll be looking to the closer, Bedell, to try to execute late for Brown. Next week, the Bears will be at the Ivy Classic, hosted by Yale. Be Yale, Brown, Cornell, and Penn. Bears last one of gymnastics Ivy League Ch Classic back in 2016. Can't technically be called the Ivy League, however, because right. of only the four competing schools. Right. So hence it's the Ivy Classic Championship.
and a couple of dual meets. And then the uh, Bears will actually host the Gymnastics East Conference Championship here on Saturday the 19th. On the floor, just wrapping up, was Abby Walsh. Julia Bedell will finish it off. She will go sixth and finally for Brown. See what Walsh's score comes in at. So, again, everybody kind of watching on the floor exercise. Bedell, she got up. Hello. What a great start on the floor for Brown. That's exactly what they needed. Saw Amanda Lou do the same thing for... LIU, she ended with a 9-8, if that's any sign. Yes. I love when the rest of the team mirrors the same dance as well. They know it so well. They practice all the time. So Brown cheering on and practically mirroring Bedell as they look to her to deliver a big score here. And Walsh will beat her season best. She got a 9.75. So Brown doing everything they need to do, save for that one big score. And they're looking to Bedell to deliver it here. She had a little hiccup in the middle of the mat a minute, moment ago. Get some great wow. height and some tremendous height, a clean landing. That is two exceptional passes. Bedell. Might have just won the entire meet for Brown. We'll see. This is going to be close, Mike. Brown did everything right on the floor. That was a blast to watch. What a great finish. Well, they can't look at it and say certainly that they, uh, you know, the old, well, we left something in the tank. Right. We no, didn't go did, for they it. Did they did can't say that at all. No question. We'll get another look at this last pass through here. Look at this pass. One two and look at the height that, that one was incredible that was her first pass and then she lands her second pass in the opposite corner Bedell putting on a master class remember her season high is a 985 Brown needs something around that area to try to catch LIU going into the final rotation it was LIU 145.125 oh. she got a 99 nine and a 97 from one judge and a 9.9 and a 9.75 on the other. So that's going to be north of 9.8. No question. Maybe a 9.875? Yeah, we're going to get a look it at around it. Here. I think they throw out the lowest. They throw out the highest. And it'll be a 9.725. So somewhere I went wrong there in my calculations. And similar to after we saw Amanda Lou, Mike, we're seeing an exhibition here. So they do that. Sometimes they roll out a seventh gymnast. The score will not count. Someone who might not be in the regular floor exercise routine, a chance yeah, to compete is, in a match setting. This is Alyssa Gardner for Brown. So she will compete as an exhibition here. Yep. And you're allowed to do that with a couple of athletes to get them scores, yep. especially as you're looking ahead to next dual meet. Or right. So Bedell coming in with just the 9725. I agree with you, Mike. I thought that was going to be higher. You and I can both get this one. This is the Mumbo number five. This one I know. There we go.
Central Connecticut, Southern Connecticut wrapping up on the beam. And now Brown will come over and applaud Gardner after her exhibition. I think the Bears had one other gymnast that was listed among the uh, exhibitionists this afternoon as they continue to tabulate the final scores. Gardner a little frustrated at the tail end of that one. Get a look at a couple of her passes. It just kind of got caught up a little bit on that last return. Yep. Waiting for these final scores to come in and waiting to see if we'll get one more exhibition on the floor as well. I think LIU has it myself. Yeah, I, I think I they, think they needed a 9-8. I, I really think that Brown needed a 9-8 on the floor. And I thought Bedell had a really good chance to get it, but it might have been that small slip up that you pointed towards between passes. That was the difference. Believe an exhibition on the beam as well for Southern Connecticut. So we had a slip off the bar. She hops back on though, and now an eighth gymnast on the floor, and Carolyn a second Van exhibition, Zandt, I think, for Brown. Still taking a look down the scorer's table. See if everything has been finalized. And the Bears will get behind yet another one of their exhibition gymnasts here today. We'll get another look at a couple of the passes on that last floor exercise. Little stumble at the end, but overall, relatively clean routine. There's Coach Carver Milne, 1997 graduate of the University of Alaska at Anchorage. It's close by. Just down the road. Great city. I don't know if you've ever been to Anchorage. I, I want to go to Alaska. Oh, what a great state. Soon. What a great state. So while we wait for some final scores, David and I will take a quick time out. We'll step aside from here at the Pizzatola Sports Center. Rumble and tumble wrapping up here on ESPN. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities... LIU's across the way. Well, now they shuffled. Well, there's a look at the Brown Bears team as they had the posters adorn the wall here at the Pizzatola Sports Center along with uh, LIU, Southern Connecticut, and Rhode Island College. Today's gymnastics meet is officially in the books, as was the Brown Bears' 35-11 to victory in wrestling over Sacred Heart as part of today's Rumble and Tumble. And uh, from the looks of it down there, David, doesn't look like we're getting an announcement anytime soon, but 
our speculation is that LIU had enough to pull away with a win today. I agree with you, Mike. LIU won all of the three events that they competed in in the first three rotations. Going into rotation number four, they went to the vault. Brown came to the floor and needed a big score. They had a lot of really solid scores, nothing below a 9-5 and four scores in the 9-7 to 9-8 range. But I really think that they needed that one or two scores of a 9-8 plus to catch LIU. They trailed by a half a point. And right now they are finishing tabulating and calculating the scores. But it looks like LIU will come out with first. But I think the rest is pretty much solid as Rhode Island College trailed the pack in fourth. Southern Connecticut State was in third most of the day. And Brown, back and forth with LIU, will likely finish second. Overall, a pretty good day at the office here at the Pensatola Sports Center. Wrestling will next be in action in a couple weeks at Cornell as they will head to the Eastern Championships the first weekend in March. For the Brown women, the uh, gymnastics team will head to Yale next week and will compete in the Ivy Classic. So that'll do it for our coverage this afternoon of the Rumble and Tumble for our entire outstanding and hardworking ESPN team, my broadcast partner, David Korzanowski. My name is Mike Rubin saying so long from Providence. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.